Welcome to another video here at Back to Classics and today is all about this racing bike, this Ducati TT2, the 600cc racing bike uh, that was so famous in the early 1980s. And we have a packed video for you today because we're going to discuss the historic background of this racing model but also uh, how this particular bike came to be and we're going to take it to the uh, racetrack in the south of Belgium where we will uh, test it for the first time to see uh, how it actually performs. So, hope you'll enjoy this video. The historic background of the TT2. Uh, we have to go back to the uh, 1970s when Ducati was still uh, racing with the, uh, the bevel drive engine. Uh, of course starting in 1972 with the famous 750 and going further into uh, endurance racing later on. Uh, but that field is very, very competitive and the uh, big Japanese for, uh, motorcycle manufacturers, they, uh, well, they had it uh, they had their, uh, their bikes sorted and it was becoming increasingly difficult for Ducati to be, uh, to be competitive in that, in that field. Also the bevel drive engine was uh, towards the end of its, of its lifespan. Uh, so already in the early 1970s, uh, famous Ducati engineer uh, Taglioni, he envisioned a way of building an engine instead of using bevel drive uh, system to uh, control the camshafts, he envisioned a use of a toothed belt. And that was first uh, done with the introduction of the Panta in uh, 1979, the 500cc, uh, the 500SL uh, Panta. Uh, that was first introduced then with a uh, well, very new engine, completely redesigned uh, engine, and uh, that proved to be the basis for Ducati up to this very day. So it is, uh, it's a huge development uh, undertaken at that time uh, to, uh, well, to, to make a complete new engine, very compact and, and, and with some very sound ideas uh, for, uh, for future development. So that was actually introduced in 1979. At that stage it was not very successful, still being only in 500cc form, but that later was increased to uh, 600. Of course Ducati being Ducati, it always has to translate to the racetrack in order to uh, develop it further and to be real successful. So that was done in 1980 when the Panta was first used as a basis for a, uh, for a racing bike. Uh, based on the 500cc uh, uh, Panta, but in increased uh, displacement uh, right up to 580-something-cc, uh, so close to 600. And it was built uh, mostly by uh, Franco Farnay because he envisioned uh, in a, uh, entering this bike into the Italian TT2 championship. And uh, that was uh, about the 1980 season. Uh, very successful. Uh, this is actually it's, it's a Panta racing bike, so it's based on the standard uh, Panta uh, street frame, so to speak, uh, with some racing parts and, and some very good tuning. Uh, they were very successful and they won outright that, uh, that championship in 1980. Now for 1981 there were some changes in the, uh, uh, in the way that the TT Formula 2 championship uh, was to be done. And in fact, it stated that for a four-stroke engine, you could go up to 600 cc, and there was uh, well, there were very few, very few limitations as to uh, the uh, rolling chassis that was used. So um, Ducati and of course uh, Taglioni, they uh, they envisioned a racing bike for the 1981 TT2 Formula 2 Championship, and that is what became the TT2, as we see here. Uh, again, a huge development. The standard Panta engine was taken as a basic layout, but it was uh, highly tuned uh, up until the 600cc uh, uh, displacement, of course, but using larger valves, uh, uh, racing camshafts, and it was made lighter in, in every, every possible way, large carburetors, uh, etc., in, in order to get a, uh, well, the most power out of a 600cc uh, twin cylinder that was possible at the time. But the rolling chassis, uh, they went really uh, mad with that because it was, they were able to get the frame very, very tight around the, uh, around the engine. Uh, we can show you how tight it actually is around here. Uh, but that, that rolling chassis, it was done with the idea in mind to keep it as light as possible, to keep it as nimble as possible and to, uh, to get the most out of that little 600cc engine that was fitted in there. 
Um, so uh, going over the details, uh, there were many uh, different uh, configurations of the, uh, of the TT2, but for the uh, 1981 season uh, they were uh, able to get a really compact and really light design out of that. And that proved because at the first uh, outing in 1981 uh, it won outright the first race, uh, so that is also in true Ducati style because that was also done with the, uh, with the Mariana, the 125 uh, Desmo, the 750 Imola uh, and later on again with uh, uh, many racing bikes uh, to, uh, to follow. Uh, so TT2 was very successful in 1981. So 1982, it was an uh, uh, opportunity for Ducati to develop the bike even further and uh, uh, famous driver Walter Kusik, he, uh, uh, he, uh, he favoured the 16 inch front wheel uh, compared to the 18 inch that was fitted the year earlier. Uh, so it was further developed uh, to, uh, to do that, uh, to, to keep that with the front wheel. The engine was further tuned with uh, even larger carburetors, uh, etc. Uh, dry clutch was in, uh, introduced as well in that year. Uh, and there was also a small series of about 20 made uh, customer bikes that uh, anyone could buy in order to enter into as a privateer into, uh, into racing uh, schemes around the world. Uh, that was also done in 1983. Uh, again, about 20 or 30 of these bikes, bikes were built, so they are uh, very, very rare and very sought after uh, these days. Uh, the TT2 was further developed into the uh, 750 TT1 in, the, in 1983, uh, but that goes too far for this video because we would like to focus on the, on the TT2, the 600cc version. Of this, uh, of this bike. One name that is uh, closely linked to the success of the TT2 was of course Tony Rutter and he was uh, successful on the Isle of Man in 1983 winning the uh, uh, Formula 2 race there uh, that year uh, and also went on to uh, win the, uh, the championship in 1984, the TT Formula 2 championship. Uh, he pref always preferred the 18 inch uh, front wheel so that uh, uh, shows you a little bit about what the preferences are of, uh, of different, uh, different uh, riders but uh, that was uh, certainly the case. Um, uh, he went on to even race the TT1, the 750 version of the TT2 uh, but in all you can say that uh, the TT2 as a project, as a uh, racing bike in the early 1980s was really something that, uh, that set Ducati apart as builder of these, of these racing bikes. It also lay the, uh, the, the basis for uh, all further developments, because like I said, that engine, the basic Panta engine layout was used uh, until this, this very day when Ducati still makes the, the Desmo Due engines uh, based on the basic layout that was first developed in 1979 by, uh, by Fabio Taglioni. Uh, so it, it spawned a, a whole range of, of racing bikes going into the uh, uh, late 1980s uh, when it was uh, as a racing bike more uh, replaced by the, uh, the four valve uh, water cooled engines of the early 1990s. So um, very successful bike and uh, one that uh, took Ducati through a very very rough era. Uh, the 1980s were uh, particularly early 1980s were particularly hard for Ducati as the uh, production fell it was uh, uh, were producing at a, at a huge loss so it was uh, only because of the success this bike had that the Ducati name uh, continued to, uh, uh, to be uh, revered and uh, ultimately laid the basis for success in the future. So a very important, important bike for, uh, for Ducati in its, uh, in its history. So this bike is now uh, completely done and uh, ready to be tested tomorrow on the uh, circuit of uh, Metet in the south of Belgium. So we will now load it up into our van and head south uh, where you will be joining us and where I will be telling a little bit more about this, uh, this particular project and how it all came about. So join us in Belgium. <laughs> So about this specific bike, this uh, TT2 that we've built, uh, we were approached by a client uh, if we were able to uh, build an exact copy, an exact replica of the uh, 1983 TT2 ridden by uh, Del Piano in the Italian Championship. 
Uh, why that? Because the uh, specifications, they uh, vary a little bit from one TT2 to another. And the specifications of that particular bike were uh, uh, appealing to him. And that is why uh, we set out on this project to actually uh, recreate that, that specific bike with the aim of actually using it on days like this, on this, uh, this lovely track here in, uh, in Belgium or other places, of course. So uh, we went into our stock of parts and we found effectively a complete uh, Panta 600 engine that we used as a basis uh, to create this, uh, this racing engine from. And what we did, uh, luckily we were able to find an article that was uh, published a few years ago in an Italian magazine called uh, Motocicli d'Epoca. And it explained in detail how Ducati uh, uh, was able to make these engines, these little 600cc engines, so fast. And it explained as well uh, uh, the, 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 all of the specifications of the, uh, gear, the gears and the gearbox, uh, all the other uh, changes they've, they've done. And of course, with a little bit of our knowledge that we had ourselves, uh, we were able to, uh, to get this engine uh, together using uh, standard Panta parts, the same way the factory did that, but uh, making sure that the, uh, for instance, all the gears in the, uh, uh, the gearbox were enlightened. Uh, the uh, selector drum was, light, uh, was made lighter. The uh, crankshaft was put and made a lot of work to uh, uh, have that uh, dynamically balanced uh, to the uh, new uh, Carrillo Conrad as well as the clutch basket. Uh, well, a lot of parts were uh, machined and, and made lighter uh, to, uh, to get the most power out of this, uh, out of this engine. Uh, cylinders as well, new pistons, uh, obviously, uh, nickel steel lining, uh, racing camshafts uh, that were uh, put together with a specific set of pulleys, so we can adjust the, uh, the timing very well. Uh, so that was done. A set of 40 millimeter carburetors that were machined as well to take the uh, smaller uh, bell mounts that was used in the day, uh, remove the uh, accelerator pump. Uh, so in fact, creating the exact specification that was uh, used by Ducati back in the early 1980s. Uh, the frame we found uh, in Italy, it is, a, uh, it is a replica frame, but it is a very good replica in the sense that this is the one that only fits the uh, early Panta engines. Uh, not the later 900s, uh, which have a little bit wider uh, crankcase uh, studs, so you cannot fit a uh, 900cc engine into this frame. Uh, also making this, uh, well, you can see here how close the uh, engine, the cylinder head is to the frame tubes and how that all uh, works out. And then also we were able to find a 16-inch uh, front wheel, Campagnolo, original Campagnolo, that we uh, test, uh, tested for, uh, for strength. Uh, refurbish that uh, into uh, uh, new gold paint, of course. Uh, the rear wheel is a completely new uh, Campagnolo made by, uh, by Marvic in Italy. We, in fact, uh, can now also uh, supply these, uh, these wheels with the uh, original uh, way of uh, the um, sprocket is, uh, is mounted to that, so with a, uh, with a cup and a basket. Front fork we sourced, it's an original Marzocchi M1R, uh, very hard to find, not original on all uh, Panta, uh, sorry, TT2 racing bikes, but it was fitted to the uh, Del Piano. And then we were also able to fit this uh, specific mud guard with the uh, aluminium uh, uh, strap on there uh, to keep it in line. And of course, all the bodywork parts that were all new and specifically made, especially the fuel tank, uh, specifically made for, uh, for this project. What we have found, uh, because there are a lot of parts available uh, for TT2s, and in fact, uh, you can, you can, well, you can, for, with a few catalogs, you can probably source a complete bike uh, together. Uh, but we have found that the quality is uh, not always as it should be. So uh, that was a bit of a disappointment, and also meant that we had to, to uh, recreate a lot of parts ourselves, or to uh, spend a lot of time in uh, uh, adjusting and improving on the parts that we were able to uh, to buy for this project. Uh, of course, new painting scheme in the same colors as the Del Piano racing bike. Enough talking for now. Uh, we, like I said, we are test riding this, uh, this bike on the track here today. And we are about to uh, uh, head back to the, uh, to the track. So uh, make final preparations and then uh, we'll see how, uh, how this goes.
So that concludes this day here uh, at uh, the Metec circuit in the southern Belgium. Uh, wonderful results, great performing bike, uh, little adjustments here and there and uh, some things to work on uh, in the future. Some issues with the clutch uh, slipping in uh, fifth gear, so that we need to uh, address. Uh, but that is the whole reason why we're here, of course, is to find out uh, exactly what uh, could be uh, improved on this bike in order to make it a perfect uh, track day motorcycle for uh, the owner to enjoy on, uh, on days like this. So uh, back to the workshop for some uh, minor updates on this bike. Uh, but apart from that, uh, I think we have a very, very happy customer uh, who can enjoy this bike for many, many years to come. So that concludes this uh, video here at Back to Classic. We thank you very much for watching. Toodle doki, see you next time. <laughs>